Hello, art friends. My name is Fleshwood, and today I have five creepy stories for you. To be more specific, five scary stories to tell in the dark. I recently saw the scary stories to tell in the dark movie, and I was immediately inspired. I really wanted to draw the characters from the book slash movie, so I'm going to be drawing the characters from the movie but I'm going to be reading the stories from the book. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope this creeps you out. Harold When it got hot in the valley, Thomas and Alfred drove their cows up to a cool green pasture in the mountains to graze. Usually, they stayed there with the cows for two months. Then they brought them down to the valley again. The work was easy enough, but oh, it was boring. All day, the two men tended their cows. At night, they went back to the tiny hut where they lived. They ate supper and worked in the garden and went to sleep. It was always the same. Then, Thomas had an idea that changed everything. Let's make a doll the size of a man, he said. It would be fun to make, and we could put it in the garden to scare the birds. It should look like Harold, Alfred said. Harold was a farmer they both hated. They made a doll out of old sacks stuffed with straw. They gave it a pointy nose like Harold's and tiny eyes like his. Then they added dark hair and a twisted frown. Of course, they also gave it Harold's name. Each morning on their way to the pasture, they tied Harold to a pole in the garden to scare away the birds. Each night, they brought him inside so that he wouldn't get ruined if it rained. When they were feeling playful, they would talk to him. One of them might say, how are the vegetables growing today, Harold? Then the other, making believe he was Harold, would answer in a crazy voice. Very slowly, they both would laugh, but not Harold. Whenever something went wrong, they took it out on Harold. They would curse at him, even kick or punch him. Sometimes one of them would take the food they were eating, which they were both sick of and smear it on the doll's face. How do you like that stew, Harold? He would ask. Well, you better eat it, or else. Then the two men would howl with laughter. One night, after Thomas had wiped Harold's face with food, Harold grunted. Did you hear that? Alfred asked. It was Harold, Thomas said. I was watching him when it happened. I can't believe it. How could he grunt? Alfred asked. He's just a sack of straw. It's not possible. Uh, let's throw him in the fire, Thomas said, and that'll be that. Let's not do anything stupid, said Alfred. We don't know what's going on. When we move the cows down, we'll leave him behind. For now, let's just keep an eye on him. So they left Harold sitting in the corner of the hut. They didn't talk to him or take him outside anymore. Now and then the doll grunted, but that was all. After a few days, they decided there was nothing to be afraid of. Maybe a mouse or some insects had gotten inside Harold and were making those sounds. So Thomas and Alfred went back to their old ways. Each morning, they put Harold out in the garden and each night they brought him back into the hut. When they felt playful, they joked with him. When they felt mean, they treated him as badly as ever. Then one night, Alfred noticed something that frightened him. Harold is growing, he said. I was thinking the same thing, Thomas said. Maybe it's just our imagination, Alfred replied. We have been up here on this mountain for too long. The next morning, while they were eating, Harold stood up and walked out of the hut. 
He climbed up on the roof and trotted back and forth, like a horse on its hind legs. All day and all night he trotted like that. In the morning, Harold climbed down and stood in a far corner of the pasture. The men had no idea what he would do next. They were afraid. They decided to take the cows down into the valley that same day. When they left, Harold was nowhere in sight. They felt as if they had escaped a great danger and began joking and singing. But when they had gone only a mile or two, they realized they had forgotten to bring the milking stools. Neither one wanted to go back for them, but the stools would cost a lot to replace. There really is nothing to be afraid of, they told one another. After all, what could a doll do? They drew straws to see which one would go back. It was Thomas. I'll catch up with you, he said, and Alfred walked towards the valley. When Alfred came to a rise in the path, he looked back for Thomas. He did not see him anywhere, but he did see Harold. The doll was on the roof of the hut again. As Alfred watched, Harold kneeled and stretched out a bloody skin to dry in the sun. The Red Spot One night, a young girl was sleeping in her bed when a spider crawled across her face. It stopped for a few minutes on her left cheek, then it went on its way. When she woke up the next morning and looked in the mirror, she noticed a red spot on her cheek. What's this? She asked her mother. It looks like a spider bite, her mother replied. It will go away, just don't scratch it. Soon the small red spot grew into a big red boil. Look at it now, the girl said. It's getting bigger. That sometimes happens. Her mother said, it's coming to a head. In a few days, the red spot was even larger. Look at it now, the girl said. It hurts so much and it makes me look so ugly. We'll have the doctor look at it, her mother said. Maybe it's infected. But the doctor couldn't see the girl until the next day. That night, she decided to take a nice relaxing bath. As she lay soaking in the warm water, the boil suddenly burst. Out poured a swarm of tiny spiders from the eggs their mother had laid in her cheek. The Dream Lucy Morgan was an artist. She had spent a week painting in a small country town and decided that the next day she would move on. She would go to a village called Kingston, but that night Lucy Morgan had a strange dream. She dreamed that she was walking up a dark carved staircase and entered a bedroom. It was an ordinary room, except for two things. The carpet was made up of large squares that looked like trap doors, and each of the windows was fastened shut with big nails that stuck up out of the wood. In her dream, Lucy Morgan went to sleep in that bedroom. During the night, a woman with a pale face and black eyes and long hair came into her room. She leaned over the bed and whispered, This is an evil place. When the woman touched her arm to hurry her along, Lucy Morgan awakened from her dream with a shriek. She lay awake the rest of the night, trembling. In the morning, she told her landlady that she had decided not to go to Kingston after all. I can't tell you why, she said, but I just can't bring myself to go there. Then why don't you go to Dorset? The landlady said, it's a pretty town, and it isn't too far. So Lucy Morgan went to Dorset. Someone told her she could find a room in a house at the top of the hill. 
It was a pleasant looking house, and the landlady there, a plump motherly woman, was as nice as could be. Let's look at the room, she said. I think you will like it. They walked up a dark carved staircase, like the one in Lucy's dream. And these old houses, staircases are all the same, Lucy thought. But when the landlady opened the door to the bedroom, it was the room in her dream, with the same carpet that looked like trap doors, and the same windows fastened with big nails. This is just a coincidence, Lucy told herself. How do you like it? The landlady asked. I'm not sure, Lucy said. Well, take your time, the landlady said. I'll bring up some tea while you think about it. Lucy sat on the bed, staring at the trap doors and the big nails. Soon there was a knock on the door. It's the landlady with the tea, she thought. But it wasn't the landlady. It was the woman with the pale face and the black eyes and the long black hair. Lucy Morgan grabbed her things and fled. The Big Toe A boy was digging at the edge of the garden when he saw a big toe. He tried to pick it up, but it was stuck to something. So he gave it a good hard jerk and it came off in his hand. Then he heard something groan and scamper away. The boy took the toe into the kitchen and showed it to his mother. It looks nice and plump, she said. I'll put it in the soup and we'll have it for supper. That night, his father carved the toe into three pieces, and they each had a piece. Then they did the dishes, and when it got dark, they went to bed. The boy fell asleep almost at once, but in the middle of the night, a sound awakened him. It was something out in the street. It was a voice. And it was calling to him. Where is my toe? It groaned. When the boy heard that, he got very scared, but he thought, It doesn't know where I am. It will never find me. Then he heard the voice once more. Only now, it was closer. Where is my toe? It groaned. The boy pulled the blankets over his head and closed his eyes. I'll go to sleep, he thought. When I wake up, it'll be gone. But soon he heard the back door open, and again he heard the voice. Where is my toe? It groaned. Then the boy heard footsteps move through the kitchen into the dining room into the living room, into the front hall. Then slowly they climbed the stairs. Closer and closer they came. Soon they were in the upstairs hall. Now they were outside his door. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. His door opened. Shaking with fear, he listened as the footsteps slowly moved through the dark toward his bed. Then, they stopped. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. You've got it! Our last scary story to tell in the dark is titled Me Tai Doty Walker. There was a haunted house where every night a bloody head fell down the chimney. At least, that's what people said. So nobody would stay there overnight. Then a rich man offered $200 to whoever would do it. And this boy said he would try if he could have his dog with him. So, it was all settled. The very next night, the boy went to the house with his dog. 
To make it more cheerful, he started a fire in the fireplace. Then he sat in front of the fire and waited and his dog waited with him. For a while, nothing happened. But a little after midnight, he heard someone singing softly off in the woods. The singing sounded something like this. It's just somebody singing, the boy told himself. But he was frightened. Then his dog answered the song. Softly and sadly, it sang. The boy could not believe his ears. His dog had never uttered a word before. Then a few minutes later, he heard the singing again. Now it was closer and louder, but the words were the same. This time, the boy tried to stop his dog from answering. He was afraid that whoever was singing would hear it and come for them. But his dog paid no attention, and again it sang. A half hour later, the boy heard the singing again. Now it was in the backyard, and the song was the same. Again, the boy tried to keep his dog quiet. But the dog sang out louder than ever. Soon the boy heard the singing again. Now it was coming down the chimney. The dog sang right back. Suddenly, a bloody head fell out of the chimney. It missed the fire and landed right next to the dog. The dog took one look at it and fell over, dead from fright. The head turned and stared at the boy, and slowly it opened its mouth. And... And that was all five scary stories to tell in the dark. Each of these stories was featured in the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark movie, and I have drawn a simple sticker sheet um, with one sticker representing each story. I've had this sticker paper for like ever and I decided it would be fun to finally test it out and to make my own scary stories to tell in the dark stickers. So that's what you see here. I have made my own. I will be selling this sticker set in my shop which will be in the links down below or you can visit it at fleshwadyt.storenv.com. It would mean a lot if you would check it out and maybe buy something from my shop. That would be cool. So here's the stickers. They came out very matte. They're really, really faded. I did not think that matte would mean that faded. Um, they're still pretty cool though, so I will still be selling them in my shop. I'm just gonna sell them really cheap. Probably three bucks or even 250 maybe for this set of five. So I'm a little disappointed but I still think they're really cool stickers. Uh, the Pale Lady is my favorite. Vote in the poll which one is your favorite. Um, and yeah, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys were creeped out a bit and you should definitely check out more of these scary stories to tell in the dark short stories because they, they're some creepy ones. I hope you liked my drawings and my readings. Make sure to give this video a like if you did and make sure to subscribe if you aren't. Thank you so, so much for watching. Until the next video, bye.